So thank you so much for everyone uh, for coming today. Um, this is the second time I have given this talk. Uh, the first time I gave it in Spanish, and uh, it wasn't it wasn't as complex as this one today. So I'm gonna have multiple demos and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys like it. So who am I? I'm that, I'm that guy right there. Um, I look better in Photoshop uh, than in real life. Uh, I go by Pato. Pato means duck um, in Spanish. So like the animal, like quack quack. Uh, so I'm that guy. Uh, I work for PayPal as a staff developer advocate. I'm also a member of different communities like the Google Developer Expert uh, Program, Microsoft MVP, Out0 Ambassador. I'm a Postman Supernova. I'm a Twilio Champion. I'm a AWS Community Builder, Google Woman Take Maker, Media Developer Expert at Cloudinary, and I'm a OneSignal Messenger as well. In the bottom, you can see my Twitter handle. Feel free to, well, you cannot really see it. I think I'm blocking it, but it's somewhere in there. Um, it's Dev Pato. Feel free to ask any questions um, on Twitter. Just make sure to do it um, on a tweet instead of a DM. That way people can call me out if I'm saying something that is not true. So what are the NFCs? Anyone knows? Yeah? So it's not NFT. I know like a lot of you guys <laughs> probably got it confused and someone told me last night, hey, I heard that you're talking about crypto. I said, no, <laughs> that's not what it is. So we're not talking about um, monkeys and where they are. Um, so NFCs are not NFTs. So far so good? Perfect. I'm glad we're in the same channel. Um, so, uh, what are NFCs? NFCs come from the acronym uh, Near Field Communication. As the name says, basically it's a short range um, power that gets transmitted uh, between two devices. You can commonly find um, NFCs using these um, icons. Um, that's essentially how they look like in, in stores and in other places and in your credit card and, and things like that. And I will show you some some examples on how you can find them in the real life. So this is a um, NFC sticker. I actually have like 50 of them to give away for free um, for you guys to play. They're super cheap. They're like 30 cents each. Um, so now I'm bankrupt because of that. Um, you can find them in like keychains, even rings. Um, if you want to track your, your spouse, that's the way to do it. And well, you can even use a NFC cashless um, credit card, for example, to make a payment. So some of the advantages, oh, hold on. Um, I think I missed up on that. Uh, some of the usages of the NFCs are uh, buying tickets, right? Um, you can do employee check-in and check-out. So you can use the NFC and then the, uh, the employee can come into the building and then tap their phone and then you can register what time they're coming in and, and coming out. Uh, you can use it for gym memberships, for example. You can use the NFCs to process payments uh, like PayPal, Google Pay, Apple Pay, uh, and many more. You can even use it to access um, your PC. Fun fact, I have like a tiny device. I don't know if you can see it right here but this device is an NFC and PayPal uses it for security purposes for me to log in into the computer. So without that, I just can't use my computer at all. Um, you can even use it to pay for the transit. Uh, I live in New York City and in New York City, I just use my phone to, uh, to pay for the ride of the Metro. Um, you can use the museum menus, which I think is um, one of my favorite ones and I'm gonna explain you the why. And uh, for my marketing purposes, games and you can even use them uh, for inventories instead of a uh, of a warehouse so as you can see this is the security key that we essentially um, use at paypal it's very similar to that one um, if you have a new passport um, i don't know who's from lithuania okay do you guys use the the new passport with the nfc and stuff like that okay so that's essentially what you have in your passport you have an nfc um, right here you're looking at a museum picture and you can put an NFC in the back and then someone can tap their phone and they can pull that information from the picture. Once again, you can do the, the employee check-in and check-out and you can use it for menus in a restaurant. The reason why I really like NFCs for the restaurant industry is because I hate going to a restaurant that doesn't really have a light and I just, I'm not able to open the menu 
because I don't have a light and the QR code just doesn't read. So that is just uh, a simple way to solve a problem using just the, the NFC. Some of the disadvantages of the NFCs are that not every device supports NFCs. Mainly, probably devices from like 2017 up to now, they support NFCs. Um, the NFC information sharing can be done uh, from a distance, meaning, let's say if I want to share information from an NFC that is actually like in this distance, I'm not gonna be able to do it. The devices have to be fairly close. It's definitely more expensive than using a QR code because a QR code, you can just print thousands of them in a piece of paper and an F NFC tag is like, like I said, like 38 cents or 33 cents uh, of a dollar. Um, not all the browsers support the web NFC API. Currently, the only browser that supports the web NFC API is Google Chrome. And no. No, because you have Google Chrome installed on your iPhone, that means that you're gonna be able to use it. I don't know if you know, but um, Google Chrome on your iPhone device is actually not Google Chrome. It's Safari. It's basically a mask, it's a, it's a theme. And I'm not just talking about Google Chrome, I'm talking about Firefox, uh, Opera, every single browser installed on your iPhone is Safari in the background. Um, the WebNFC API is available only on Android devices. But that doesn't stop us from playing with NFCs even if you have an iPhone. So who, who has an iPhone here? Okay, so the majority of the people have Android, so awesome. But I want you guys to still play with the NFC even if you have, a, even if you have a, um, an iPhone, and I'm gonna show you how to do so. So, tu, 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 tu. I'm gonna unplug my phone. Just gotta unlock it. Of course, I don't know my password. Uh, let's see now if I can find it. Awesome. So I don't know if you knew, but if you connect your iPhone into your Apple device, uh, your Mac, and you have QuickTime, you can basically show the screen without any software. That's actually pretty cool. I learned that today. Um, yeah, for real. <laughs> so, um, okay. So if you have an iPhone and you have this application called Shortcuts, if you don't have it, you can download it for free in the Apple Store. You can use it and um, to make automations. So you can interact with hardware using your iPhone. So if you click on the Automations tab, and then on the top right side, you're gonna see a plus sign, and then you're gonna click on Create Personal Automation. Then as you can see, there's multiple things already uh, predefined for us. In this case, which one I'm gonna choose? The NFC one. So I click in there, and basically what this is gonna be doing is, uh, I'm gonna pull a NFC that I have right here. So I'm gonna be using this one, and this one right here. So basically, uh, what this does is, I'm gonna click a scan, and I can scan this NFC tag, right? Then I can do cool things with it. For example, I'm gonna say, um, make, FaceTime call, click OK, then I'm gonna click Next. Then um, it gives you some suggestions, for example, you can send a message. So basically what's gonna happen is whenever your phone taps the NFC tag, it's gonna send a message. But in this case, I want to make a FaceTime call. So I'm gonna click on Add Action, and um, I'm gonna click on Kim because she's my friend. Then I'm gonna click on Next, and then I'm gonna click on Done. And then I'm just gonna pray and hope that this actually works. So I'm gonna approach my phone into the NFC um, and hopefully uh, a call goes through. So let's see if, if um, Kim decides to answer the phone. If not, then she's not cool. FYI, Kim is a speaker. So hey, Kim, what's up? Where are you at? 
Where are you? Right here. <laughs> so she's right there. So say hi to Kim. Hey, everybody. <laughs> so that's actually, I think it's actually very cool. It's something super simple that you can do. Thank you so much, Kim. You rock. Um, another cool thing that you can do is, for example, um, I have already predefined made um, this NFC that sends a tweet. So in the background, in the back, I'm sorry, I have this sticker that has the NFC. Everyone can see it? Awesome. So I'm going to approach, one second, I'm going to approach my phone. And I have already a custom message of for writing a, a tweet. And I'm just going to tweet it, and boom then someone's gonna see this tweet so i think it's really cool the problem is that once again you cannot use the uh web evidence nfc api but you can still interact and do cool things if you have an iphone device so now let's talk about the cool things um about the the coding part the web nfc api so this guy right here his name is kenneth um anyone knows him now he works for uh, Intel. He's a principal um, architect or something like that. And basically, this guy is so smart. And thanks to him, I have a job, pretty much. Uh, he is one of the co-inventors of progressive web applications. Anyone knows what a PWA is? OK, so thanks to that guy. And he also is one of the lead maintainers of the NFC project. So. This guy is just like a genius. I wish um, I was as smart as him. So he's a pretty nice guy, too. So make sure to follow him and say thanks. So the Web NFC API allows you to um, interact with uh, NFC tags using the browser, right? So in this case, you have the NFC tag, you have your device. And the cool thing about the NFC tags is that they don't require uh, a battery. So it's not like you need to put them to charge or something like that. The way they work is your phone is going to send power to the NFC and they're going to basically be active. Does that make sense? OK, awesome. So as you can see in this image, the phone is sending the power to the NFC. And then I can interact with the NFC tag by reading or writing content or data into the, into the NFC. The stickers that I have in all these, um, in all these cards, I don't even know where they are, they have memory of 514 kilobytes. That's actually a lot. That's like multiple pages from Word. So if you're like, if you like typing things, like that's like, I feel like 10 pages from Word. So it's a lot of data. Uh, so the main method, methods of the Web NFC API, there's three of them. Scan, read, and write. The scan one, basically what it does is you need to do uh, an instance of the object of the NDEF reader, right? And start interacting with the scan method. The scan method is basically gonna enable the Web NFC API in your device to detect an NFC tag. Keep in mind that whenever you do this, the battery consumption in your phone is gonna increase. So just keep that in mind and Whenever I have the, uh, the scan method, that is actually a promise, I can, um, I can start reading things or I can even catch errors. For example, let's pretend that the NFC tag is damaged, then I'm not going to be able to, to read the data. But if it's, if it's good, then I can read the data that is inside of the NFC. So for the promise to be resolved, you need uh, three things. First of all, the user needs to allow um, the phone to read an NFC tag. Basically, you're gonna get a prompt on your on your website, and it's gonna say, "Hey, allow um, the interaction between the and the NFCs and your phone." The same way that you get a prompt to receive push notifications. It's essentially the same. Um, the user's phone needs to, of course, support the NFCs, and the user um, needs to have the the website enabled with that. So the read one, uh, the read method, this method um, is very interesting because this is where you're going to define how you're going to read your data. An NFC tag supports uh, multiple types of uh, record types. For example, JSON objects, you can even store images, URL, text, and, um, and I, th I think that's it, like JSON, media, 
uh, URLs and text. Yeah, those are the four. Um, and basically, you can have more than one data type in your NFC. Like, don't think that just because you already just set text into your NFC, that's about it. Nate. You can have an image, you can have a text, you can have a URL, and you can have JSON data in it. You, have, you can have the four things. And what's going to happen is whenever uh, you're using the on-reading event of your Web NFC API, it's going to create an array. And as you can see, I have a for loop. So it's going to loop through, uh, through that information, and each record is going to have a, a, a data type. If it's text, then my switch statement is going to catch it, and then it's going to do something with the data. If it's a URL, it's going to grab the data and do something with it. On the other hand, the other method is the write method. This method allows you to put data into the NFC tag. Once again, this method is a promise, and once again, you need to enable the um, NFC in your device. Um, you need to support the, the NFC by having uh, Google Chrome in your device installed. In this case, like I was telling you, you need to have an Android device. And the user needs to be connected and be close to an NFC tag. So if the N NFC, once again, is far away, you're not going to be able to save data. So working with a Web NFC API. So if you have an iPhone, um, the way to interact with it is actually very complicated because, uh, yes, you can, I think like everyone, everyone here is a web developer, All right? Go, okay. Just one person. Okay. Well, uh, what are the, everyone else doing? Like, what do you guys work on? Like Java? No. What do you work on? Mobile development, okay, the, the NFC still applies to so, you. Know, the cool thing about the just mobile development, like native, is that it works pretty much with any device. Doesn't matter if it's the web or not. So they have like a native API for that. So if you are, um, uh, actually you're probably familiar with this as well. Are you an Android developer? Okay, cool. So this looks familiar for you as well. So um, if you have an Android, you need to tell your device that you are a developer. Literally, that's what you have to do. Uh, because if you want to debug the Web NFC API, you need to interact with the NFC. And the computer doesn't have an NFC reader by default. So you need to connect your phone, interact with the NFC, and you need to let uh, your phone that you're a developer, that way you can debug it. So far, so good? So the first thing is going to the About Phone, and then in the bottom, you're going to see this build number, and you're literally going to tap seven times, not eight nor five, seven. I don't know who came up with that number, but um, basically that is going to give you the superpower of becoming a developer on your phone. From there, you go to developer options and click on USB debugging, and then it's going to um, open this, this page, and you're going to ensure that you have the developer options enabled, and then you're going to enable USB debugging. That way, you can connect your phone and you can start interacting with the Web NFC API and do magic with it. So now let's use a demo. Um, who wants to be a volunteer, a male? Anyone wants to come to stage? Okay, yeah, come. <coughs> so I'm building some like sample demos for you to see things that you can do with a web NFC API or just with NFCs overall um, for you to be creative. I think the NFCs are like toys, uh, so I think they're pretty fun. So what is your name? Ernest? Ernest. 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 Okay. Perfect. Where are you from? Uh, Lithuania. Nice. Vilnius? Yeah. Okay. Cool stuff. So thanks to our volunteers today, we are going to put some tags on you. Uh, <laughs> so um, put this in your hand. Hold on. I actually did it backwards. Let's see. So put this one in your hand. Just like put it like that. And then we're going to put one in your head. One in your arm and one in your leg. Is that cool with you? It doesn't hurt, I promise. 
if it hurts then you can call insurance and then just tell them that you got hurt by a developer but for a good cause for science <laughs> okay cool so one for your arm oops this is way too complicated okay put this one in your arm just put it wherever and then we're gonna forget about the head and i mean the leg and we're just gonna put one in your head is that cool awesome <coughs> Just put it like, like that, however. Yeah, boom. There you go. And then put that in your head, yeah. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Android device that I love with all my heart. And I'm going to connect it to my computer. That way, I can interact with the WebNFC API. Okay, perfect. So, so um, for you to interact with your device, you need to go to the Google Chrome um, inspect devices, and you're gonna connect it. And once you connect the device, it should appear in here. Let's see if it appears. Body parts. Um, and then um, you are basically working with local development, right? In this case, my app is in the port 3001. So I'm going to tell my device to open that website my local server can anyone see yes okay perfect so I'm gonna click on open now uh, I'm gonna click on inspect mm -hmm. let's see I don't know why it's not showing right now okay there you go so perfect so as you can see, I have this beautiful website, right? Um, basically, what I'm going to be doing is I can write data to the tag. And in this case, I'm just going to put leg. Then I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to approach my phone, my device, into the tag. And then I get a notification that says value has been saved right and then what i can do is i can use once again my phone to scan body parts of my friend right here in this case we're going to scan his head and then i get that information so all that information is being stored inside of the of the tag and then if i close it and scan again i can see that oh it's an arm so this could be just a simple app for educational purposes, but you can do like multiple things. So let's actually take a look to the code. You can remove your things. Thank you. I have a question. Please. Tell me. Uh, when you write something to NFC, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can store only one instance of the text, right? You cannot have mon multiple instances. You can, you can actually have multiple, yeah. And then, um, that's all? That's all your question? Awesome. Then let's go back to the code. So the magic actually happens in the scan, right? Uh, when I have the scan method, remember I'm enabling your phone to read uh, to read the tag, right? Um, but as you can see, I'm using the abort controller. The reason why I'm using this API is to tell the phone, hey, I have found an NFC, stop the scanning, that way I'm saving battery. If you don't do this, then your phone is gonna be constantly scanning for NFCs until of course you close the website or you close the application in this case if you're a native developer. But the, the API is gonna be different of course on the native development, but essentially they do the same. So once again, uh, I read the tag, everything is good, then I abort it, and then we are done scanning NFCs. 
uh, the other cool thing about this is the write. So in this one right here, I'm specifying uh, the media type and the record type. In this case, it's going to be MIME. And I'm storing a JSON record. In this case, I try to simplify this application and I'm storing only one JSON object, which is going to be the name. And then I have a function that looks at my can data, finds the body part, and pulls the information. But you can actually store this whole thing in it or this whole array. That's up to you. Why? Once again, because your NFC is going to support 414 kilobytes of data. And this is obviously way less than that. So um, who wants to see another example? Let's see another one. OK, cool. So uh, I'm going to connect another thing right here. The problem with this, um, like, like as you can see, the problem with this um, project, which is a very cool one, is that um, you need a lot of hardware. So the only thing that I'm going to be doing with this is I'm going to connect this camera for everyone to see what I'm doing uh, in a closer way. I'm going to go to this project right here. And I'm going to um, run. How are we doing on time? Are we doing good? OK, perfect. Um, OK, I'm going to click on yes. So I'm starting this project. OK, so it's running the port 302, which means I need to go here and enable that port, right? So I can use it with my, with my device. 302, 302, 302, done. OK, now I'm going to, where is it? OK. OK, now I'm going to click open. OK, mm -hmm. OK, the project has been open here. Now we're going to go to QuickTime really quick. And I'm going to do Logitech Pro. OK, you can see yourself. Cool. Now um, I have this card right here. This is a, a card that has an NFC. These ones are a little bit more expensive. I don't know how much exactly they are, but I have a few of them to give away. So just come by and grab one. Um, and like I said, I'm broke already, so might as well just go all the way in. Um, so the cool thing that, um, about the NFC is that you can use them for different representations, right? In this case, I have this card, and I'm going to pretend that um, that is maybe an item that I want to buy, right? Maybe you want to put a, a sticker in your store. Maybe you have a clothing line. And I'm going to put money in it and uh, or set a, a price, depending on how the purpose that you want to do. And I'm going to set the price to, the, to this. And then I'm going to use my application to make a payment transaction. So I need to, in here, do port 02. Um, let's see. There you go. So I'm going to be doing that. And then, OK. I just want to make sure that everyone can see, especially the people who are um, online. So just bear with me for a second. OK. Now I unlock my phone. OK, perfect. Everyone, Everybody can see now? Awesome. Cool. So I'm going to put this card right here for a second on my computer or somewhere in here uh, so it doesn't fall. There you go. You see it's falling. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set a price, right? Um, as you can see, all I have right here is just a um, an input text that only accepts numbers. So I'm going to set the price to a, I don't know, a 56. Then I'm going to click on Save. Once again, I'm going to approach the tag. And 
I got the notification saying that the value has been saved. I'm gonna click OK. Now what I wanna do is actually make a payment transaction. So I'm gonna click scan. Now it's like currently scanning, as you can see. Approach the phone. Now I grab the price of 856. Now I can make the, the payment processing with PayPal or Google Pay, Apple Pay, or whoever you want to use. So, so it's very simple. It's a very simple API, but very powerful because you can do so many things with it. So like I said, I was showing you all these demos for you to be creative. I want you to play with, with this toy. That's, that's the way I see it. And maybe you can come up with a um, startup um, or like a business idea. So one of my friends, he started doing a business idea where um, security guards in Mexico, they need to go around a school and they need to do uh, checkups, right? They need to go to the level one, to level two, to level three, but there's not really a way for them to prove that they have been there at the time that they should be. So this guy came up with the idea of putting NFC tags in uh, certain areas of a college. So now the, the security guard goes with their phone taps the NFC and then the dashboard with the data gets updated and then you can see if the guard is actually doing the rounds when they should. Super simple idea, but it, it works. Now the difference between the code that we were looking at before uh, for the previous app and this one is that the previous app is storing a JSON. This one is just storing a text. That is just the difference, but the code is doing essentially the same. And right here in this um, in this code right here, I'm not using the abort controller. So I'm constantly scanning all the time. So just keep that in mind. And you can clone this repo if you want. I will give you the link at the end. So now let's go back to the presentation. So I want everyone to go in there, if you can, and if you want. And basically, I have this um, Social Master NFC. And um, I'm going to give it away. This one is like $20. This is like hell expensive. Um, basically, this is a business card, but allows you to save your um, information, like your Twitter, your TikTok, Facebook, and so on, in an NFC. So I'm just gonna give you guys a few minutes. I can okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that better? Did that make it bigger? Everyone good to go? Awesome. Okay, so we got 15 people. Anyone else? It's not working? Okay. You need to scan the... It's fine, I, I'm just gonna give you a color. You're gonna be blue. So you're gonna be red <laughs> and then um, what color are you? You're yellow today. Yeah. Okay. Huh? Okay, you're black. Remember the color. And then, okay, white. Uh, green. Anyone else? Someone say gray. Oh. Oh, wait, hold on. You guys type too fast. Gray, and then you're going to be purple. OK. Uh, they don't like you. They removed you from the list. OK, white. OK, and then I'm going to remove this line right here. Okay, so everyone is here? Okay. 
I can give you a color if that's easier for you. You're gonna be magenta. It's <laughs> just such a random color. Okay. Then I'm gonna go to this um, online picker. That way you don't think I have a favorite, even though that the color black is my favorite. But uh, pick a random item. So, oh, I think it was purple. Who's Simona's? My friend. I wish she was a million dollars, but I'm not that rich. Take it, yeah. So, um, where can you buy the NFC tax? Do you guys have Amazon here in Lithuania? Yeah? Oof, then maybe you guys can gather together and pay for one shipping and <laughs> yeah. So as you can see, that's another thing that increases the prices of NFCs, right? The shipping. Uh, but yeah, you can buy all these products on Amazon or maybe somewhere else. I bought them there because that was the, the easiest place for me. Um, if you don't want to build your own application, you can use these NFC tools that allows you to write uh, data um, and pull the information for your NFC. Um, this application is available on Android and iPhone devices, so you don't have to worry about the NFC API. And um, let's see, let's go back to the Presso. Anyone has any questions? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we have a question online from Peter. Uh, is it possible to write protect the tags so that somebody can't overwrite your tag? Yes, great question. So uh, you can make your, um, actually I'm gonna show you. That way you don't think I'm just like lying and, and something like that. Great question. So uh, this website basically contains all the docs about the NFC API and you can make your read only, um, let's see, I think they have it like that, yes. So you can your, make your, uh, your NFC tag read only, um, or you can lock it and only set one device, one uh, data, and not make it uh, rewritable or erasable or something like that. Okay, awesome, thank you. So we had more hands in the room, so. Uh Okay, you see? Okay, somebody at the back. Here's a daily exercise. Hi, could you tell, be, uh, uh, could you tell uh, more about uh, NFC standards? Is there is one standard that all uh, phones support or there is different ones that we should be aware? That is actually a problem with the NFC. There's not a set standard. Um, that is a problem that some devices are having whenever they are transferring data. But they're working on standardizing that. Do we have any other questions in the room? We do. So once it made the read-only, can I still override it myself if I made it read-only? No. So I can make it's like a tattoo. I want. It's there forever. <laughs> okay, one more question at the front. Uh, let's say uh, thanks to or if I can the work, uh, I can use it. Uh, the COVID pandemic here in Europe, let's say uh, QR codes were really first time becoming popular. It, the technology QR codes exist for years and just yeah, thanks to the COVID pandemic, it became kind of popular by the bigger public, so not only the geeks. Mm -hmm. The question is, will NFC replace QR and will it be fast and soon? Uh, was your question like how the adoption will be for the public and not developers? Yeah, just will it replace by, so all phones and well, by example, the menu, what, what all the places doing right now with QR codes since the pandemic, mm -hmm. will it be replaced with, uh, with NFC in a very short time and also all users, just consumers, uh, will be using it, for example, at Mesea, at restaurants, mm -hmm. at bars, yeah. So that's a very good question. Um, something that really caught my attention last year actually here in, in Vilnius is that how popular is uh, the uh, cash, uh, cashless payment option 
Like I have never seen a country that uses NFCs as much as Lithuania. Like it's super interesting. Yeah, it was super cool. Uh, the problem is I don't think it's gonna be a point where NFCs replace uh, QR codes. At least I'm just gonna give you one reason why the uh, distance limitation. Right? Why? Because a QR code you can be in the background in the back of the room. You can look at the QR code and pull data or or whatever. And then for the NFC you need to be close. So yes, uh, more people are adopting it. That's why there's um, applications like this one right here who, that are for non-developers and they can interact with the NFCs. But do I think they're gonna replace the QR codes? I don't think so. Thank you. Okay, and we have enough time for a couple more questions. So uh, I just wanted to mention that only Google Chrome supports that at the moment. Is it by choice that Apple uh, decided not to implement uh, API or Firefox and stuff like that, or is it in the works? So the problem with Apple um, is that they are always behind with the web standards. That's not, that's the reality. Like that's what it is. Um, I don't know if you know, but if you go into a website. I'm just gonna give you another example. If you go into a website and you want to receive push notifications on your iPhone and you don't have the iOS version 15.0 or above, you don't get push notifications. Which is funny is that if you have a Mac, you do get them, but you don't get them on your phone unless you have a latest iOS. Why is because they're very uh, behind with the web standards. That's, that's the reality. Um, I don't want to get into like conspiracy theories, but <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a little bit of both. I think they're like very, very busy working in, in other things. I think their priorities, um, like native applications, um, but also because they just want to set the standards of, of the web behind. I truly believe that. Okay, do we have any other questions for the last question of the session? Block the light out so I can see. I see no lights, uh, uh, no hands. In which case, I would like to say thank you very much. That was an awesome session thank with you. us to do. And uh, we now have, I believe, a 20 minute break before the next session. If anyone wants um, some NFCs, come grab them. Just be mindful, there's a lot of people in the room, so just 